Hello YouTube and thank you for joining me on my channel today. Let's look at recycling some scrap metal and forge a bushcraft chopper. I'll start by drawing a rough design to give me an idea of what I would like to end up with at the end of the day. I'm using an old steering shaft I picked up at a vehicle workshop at no charge. I have no idea what metal this is, but assuming it's a hard working car part, it should be hardenable. To test this, you treat a small piece, clamp it up in a vise, and give it a good hit with a hammer. If it breaks, it's got some form of carbon content. If it bends, it will probably not harden. After I'm sure the steel can be hardened, I'll cut off the ugly ends and weld on a rebar handle. The first thing we need to do is get the round bar flattened and drawn out. I use the round end of my hammer to move the metal outwards, then smooth it out with the flat end. Make sure your metal stays hot. Hammering on cold metal will result in cracking. Once the bar is flat, it's time to shape the tip. I'm trying to use the natural shape the metal took on when flattening to my advantage here. We need to push more metal into the top to shape the horn on the tip. And we do this by hammering a curve into the cutting edge of the blade and flattening it out as the metal bulges up. Now I can flip the blade around and focus on shaping the horn of the blade. I use the round side of my hammer to push the metal out and the flat side to smooth it out. As the blade starts to take shape, hammer the cutting edge straight, alternating your hammering strokes between the cutting edge and spine. The blade will curve towards the side you are hammering, so flip it around to flatten it out again. The tip is too rounded at this stage. To correct this, place it over the edge of the anvil and hammer the curve downwards to straighten it out. Placing the tip over the edge of the anvil gives you more room to work in without striking the face of the anvil. Continue drawing out your blade shape, alternating between the round side and flat side of your hammer, flipping the blade over regularly to ensure the entire blade gets equal hammer time. Mark the area where the handle should start and use the edge of the anvil as a punch to hammer in the starting point.
I'm using a homemade punch that fits into the hardy hole of my anvil to hammer in the handle radiuses. Straighten out the blade and move on to hammer in the bevels. I focus on the bottom half of the blade, also tilting the blade at a slight angle while hammering to establish the bevels. These will be ground out on the grinder later on. I'm happy with the profile, so I'll spend a few minutes fine-tuning, making sure everything is straight and flat. Now that the forging is done, we can clean up the profile to its final shape. I'm marking out the profile lines and trimming it with my angle grinder and belt grinder. Using a half round file, I clean out the handle radiuses so that it sits comfortably in my hand. Mark the center lines and bevel areas with a measuring caliper. Use a file clamp and a small round file to file in the plunge lines. The file clamp is a simple tool you can easily make yourself and ensures that your plunge lines line up evenly on both sides. Filing it in with a round file also gives you a nicely rounded plunge line which is easier to clean up later on. Proceed to grind the bevels. I use a 36 grit belt on my belt grinder to grind off as much metal as I can then move over to my filing jig with hand files. I prefer to finish my bevels on the file jig because I can work much more accurately than on the belt grinder. 
If you are proficient enough with a grinder, then nothing stops you to do everything on the belt grinder. But remember, grinders are aggressive, and one mistake can ruin many hours of work. Draw file the bevels to flatten it out perfectly. Start with a rough file and move down to finer files. This also helps with the cleaning up and sanding of the bevels later on. Next up is to prepare the handles. Grind off all the forge scale, mark, punch and drill your pin and lanyard holes. Since the blade is tapered from the thick handle towards a thinner blade, I'm using a popsicle stick as a spacer to level it out to ensure my holes are straight. Drill extra holes in the handles to give the epoxy room to seep through to both sides of the handle and create pillars which increases the bonding strength. Another advantage is the reduction of overall weight. Don't drill too far towards the front of the handle, as this will in turn create a weak spot where the blade could break with heavy use. Draw file the handles to ensure a clean and flat surface for the scales to be attached to. Before heat treating, it is important to normalize the blade to release any stresses the metal might have built up during forging. Normalizing greatly reduces the chances of warping and is done by heating the blade up to critical temperature and letting it air cool. Repeat this process three times, each time heating the blade slightly less than the previous time. Critical temperature can be tested on a magnet. If the blade doesn't stick to a magnet, it reached critical temperature.
clean off the scale from the bevels and sand with 150 grit sandpaper until all the heavy scratches are removed. We will focus on the final finishing after the blade is hardened. We will be doing a differential heat treat on this blade to see if we can get a nice hormone on it. Wrap the blade with binding wire. This is optional depending on the clay you use. The wire only serves as a holding mechanism to keep the clay in place. The clay I use is a local product used to patch up holes in vehicle exhaust systems and has a large heat tolerance, which makes it perfect for differential heat treatment. Cover the blade with clay, leaving about a quarter of the blade open on the cutting edge. The thickness will depend on the clay once again, but in my case I applied about 3 to 5 millimeters thick. Create a wavy pattern, trying to keep it even on both sides. Fire up the forge and preheat your oil. Heat treat the blade by heating it up to critical temperature, again testing it on a magnet. Once critical temperature is reached, edge quench your blade, holding it steady until the metal lost its glow and appears black in color. You can then let it go and let it soak for about 10 minutes. Roughly clean up the blade by sanding it with 150 grit sandpaper to remove the scale that formed. To temper the blade, place it in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 2 hours. Take it out, let it air cool and repeat for a second time. The blade should be a nice golden straw color when it comes out of the oven. Now that the heat treatment is finished, I soak the blade in white vinegar overnight to loosen up the excess forge scale on the blade. Simply scrub it off the next morning to reveal the rough texture of the forged metal. We can already see the ammonia line that formed during heat treatment, but we will focus on that in more detail later. Sand the blade clean, starting at 150 grit sandpaper, working your way up to 800 grit. I'm alternating my sanding directions to make sure that all the scratches are removed. I have decided to use dark Brazilian in boya wood lined with bright orange liners for the handles. The hardware consists of 3mm stainless steel pins 
and a 6mm stainless steel tube for the lanyard. Clean up the surface of the wood and bevel the edges of the pin slightly. Sharp edges on the pins will carve the holes in the wood larger after a couple of fitting tests. We want to avoid the pins being too loose. Use a drop of super glue to glue the liner to the wood and then to the blade. This will keep all the handle parts securely in place to drill the pinholes accurately. Proceed with drilling the holes. A light tap with a small hammer should loosen the material up again. Clean up the excess handle material around the scales, but leave about 5 mm. This will be taken off after the scales are glued and the pins set. Mark the area where your handle will sit on the liner and drill extra epoxy holes within this area on the liner. Do the same on the wood, but don't drill it all the way through. You only need to drill it a few millimeters deep to give the epoxy a better holding surface. Also mark the front shape of your handle material and grind to shape as needed. Taper the scales if needed and slightly countersink the lanyard tube hole so that we can flare the tube out later.
clean everything thoroughly with acetone, mix the epoxy and glue everything together. Use a bit of tape on your clamps to ensure that it can be easily removed once the epoxy is cured. Clamp everything up tight, but not so tight that all the epoxy is squeezed out. Clean off any epoxy that seeps out with the earbud soaked in acetone. Grind off the excess pin material and pin with a small ball hammer. I used two 10mm ball bearings clamped up in the vise to flare out the lanyard tube. Be careful not to over tight the vise to risk breaking the wood. Apply just enough pressure to bend the tube outwards. Clean up the handle scales and shape to its final profile.
Use a rotary tool to reach hard to get areas and add a sharpening choil to the blade. The blade needs to be dumped in ferric chloride to bring the hormone out, but this will damage the wood. I'm coating the wood with super glue to seal it in against the ferric chloride. Wrap your finger with plastic wrap as you don't want your skin left behind on the handle. Dip the blade in ferric chloride. The time will depend on your requirements and strength of the ferric chloride. In my case, it was about 5 minutes. Take it out, rinse the blade in a water and baking soda mix to neutralize the ferric chloride. Then polish the blade with metal polish to remove the oxides and bring out the ammon line. Sand off the super glue from the handles, finish with fine sandpaper and apply boiled linseed oil. Sharpen and tie on a lanyard. Thank you for watching and experiencing the journey of knife making with me. I hope you find the information useful. Please like, share and subscribe. Till next time, goodbye.